Hi everyone, this video is because I forgot to press record yesterday during our Zoom meeting. So I'm going to go over what we went over in class, which was just going through this first part of the worksheet. The second part of the worksheet, I did remember to press the record. So just go on back to our class uh, and check that out. For those of you that aren't in my class and are watching this, uh, it'll be a good refresher on calculating the user cost of capital for an intermediate uh, macroeconomics uh, class. So uh, let's go ahead and start off with our notation, the stuff that we have here. So uh, this first one, a brand new machine cost 25,000 mixing bowls. In our class, we are calling this P sub K. That's the real cost of capital. Notice that it's not a dollar sign. So we're saying this is the real cost. Meaning, uh, the way I like to tell my students this is think of it as the break even point where uh, you would have to uh, sell 25,000, you'd have to sell 25,000 mixing bowls in order to buy one machine. That's how much the machine costs. Uh, if you were a theater company and you are renting out a space for $200 and you're selling your tickets for $10 a piece, you'd have to sell 20 tickets. Your real cost would be, would be 20 tickets. So it's always in terms of the output. The next is the rate of depreciation. Depreciation, we're going to denote as a lowercase delta, which is the Greek letter D. The real interest rate is 2.25%. That's going to be a lowercase r. Remember, real interest is nominal minus inflation. We have the marginal product of capital that is expected over here. So uh, that's already stated here as MPKE. The firm faces a tax rate on capital. So this is going to be tau. And then at this time, there's no investment tax credits, which we call ITC. So in our class, those are the different uh, variables and parameters that we would see. Now, in class, we did not go over how to uh, calculate the, uh, oh, sorry, how to design the user cost of capital equation. I have that in another video that I can make sure that I post in the comments. But just so you know, it's the user cost of capital is equal to R plus delta 1 minus ITC times PK all over 1 minus tau. And so what we have to do is we have to just plug these numbers in. The user cost capital equals, if I take R plus delta, I get 0.11, 11%. ITC is 0, so that's a 1. The price of capital is 25,000 mixing bowls. And we divide that by 1 minus tau, which would be 0.8. Eight, right because it'd be 1 minus 0 0.2 we do all of that math out and we get 34 37 point five mixing bowls so 34 37 point five mixing bowls now how many machines should we buy to maximize profits well, this is our, our basic prof profit maximizing idea where we want to have marginal benefit equaling to marginal cost. So what's our marginal benefit? Well, our marginal benefit is this MPKE. It's 10,000 minus 1,000K. And our marginal cost is what we just found, our user cost of capital, which is 3437 37.5. So we just have to do a little bit of algebra here. Um, if, I, if I bring this 10,000 over, I'll get negative uh, 1,000K equaling to minus 6562.5. Uh, divide both sides by negative 1,000, I'll get K star, my profit maximizing level of capital, equaling to approximately 6.56 if we're rounding everything to two decimal places. So 6.56 total machines is what would be the profit maximizing point. Now we can go ahead and uh, draw this uh, diagram. We have K is going to be on the horizontal axis. We have both the user cost of capital and MPKE on the vertical axis. We know the user cost of capital. I'm uh, going to I'm going to grab an, an actual line here instead of drawing it freehand. We know the user cost of capital is going to be straight line like this. So I know that's my user cost of capital. And we have a downward sloping line uh, for the marginal product of capital. Uh, sometimes you might see it curved. It depends on what the uh, equation is. In this case, the equation was a linear one. 
Uh, in my class, I just care that you know that it's downward sloping because of that diminishing marginal returns to capital. So this is my MPKE, this is my user cost of capital, and I know that it's going to be right here, is going to be my 6.56. This is my user cost of capital, which is going to be 3437.5, and we've finished uh, part C. Now, I do wanna take a little bit of an aside because this is what we did in class. Uh, let me show someone, someone asked about the profit that was being made. And what I want you to realize here is uh, the profit is going to be like that difference between the MPK curve and the user cost. So in class, what we did is we just took a random number. Let's just say three. What if the capital was three? Okay, what if this capital was three? And we go up and what do we notice? Well, the user cost stays the same, right? I can look back over here. The user cost does not depend on capital in the model that we've created right now. But of course, the MPK does. And so if I were to plug this into the MPK equation, right? 1,000 times 3 is 3,000 minus 10,000. So this would be 7,000 would be the benefit of the third machine. So the marginal profit, right? This would be the profit, this distance between here and here for each additional machine or part of machine that you ended up, uh, that you ended up hiring, that you ended up buying. So that's why you continue, right? You continue to hire, you continue to buy more machines up until the point where they are equal, because that's where profits are now zero and you don't want to go past that and lose money. So you always do the action up to where marginal benefit equals marginal cost. In class, uh, someone asked why would we ever do anything if, you know, if the profit is equal to zero, but remember a lot of times we do lots of activities that the cost equals the benefit. You know, if I say I want to pay $500 for a flight to California, and the flight is $500, I'm taking that flight and I'm not earning any consumer surplus, but it's because I'm, I have a willingness to pay and I pay that thing. The same thing when businesses decide to, you know, buy another machine. If I'm, if I'm going to benefit from this machine a certain amount and it costs me that exact certain amount, I still do that activity. Last but not least, we see some changes. And so it says now these conditions change. So let's get a different color in here so we can uh, make sure we're seeing these changes completely. Let's go with a red color. Uh, they're adding a tax credit of 10% and also MPK changes. So my new user cost of capital, all right, remember user cost of capital is that R plus delta, sorry, it's a little sloppy, one minus ITC uh, times PK all over one minus tau. Plug those numbers in again, right? This is 0.11, but now it's not one, it's 0.9 times that PK is still 25,000. Our uh, tax is still 20%, so 0.8, one minus tau. And we go ahead and we plug those numbers into our calculator and we get 3,093.75 mixing bowls. I'm just gonna do MB this time to save some space. So we got 3,093.75 mixing bowls. And we do the same thing, marginal benefit equals marginal cost. So 11,500 minus 1,000K equals 3,093.75. Again, do the algebra out where we get, uh, you know, 1,000 minus 1,000K equals 8406.25, 8406.25, divide both sides by negative 1000, dividing by negative 1000, and we will get that equal to 8.41. So this will be 8.41 machines. And then we can just graph this, right? We saw two things happen. We saw the user cost of capital go down, so it's gonna be down here somewhere. But we also saw the MPK shift to the right as people were uh, becoming more confident about things uh, happening, right? New computer software making things more efficient, actually. So an increase in technology. So we saw an increase here, we saw a decrease here. So we have a new point where they're equal. This is our 8.41, 8.41, and this is our 3093.75. So this is point B, I forgot to label point A, the initial was label point A. So there you have it. 
Uh, this was the first part of class um, yesterday. Again, for those of you who aren't in my class and you're like, why does he keep talking about his class? Well, these videos are for my class, but you can still get a lot out of this calculating the user cost of capital and um, and marginal uh, product of capital, the expected marginal product of capital. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, I'll email this out. Also, uh, you can check out my other videos that are related to this same topic. You can also subscribe and see other econ videos. Take care, guys.